rising middleweight prospect Jordan Williams. How are you doing today? Uh, well, first off, you know, I'm good. Thank you for asking, and I hope all is well with on your side of the world. And, you know, I don't know how it is out there in North Korea, but, you know, I hope it's all, you know, you know, you know I'm, I'm definitely asking, like, you know, let me know how it is over there for you. You know, but, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's getting better. Yeah, it's getting better? Good. Um, so fucking with me, well, you know, the last two months has been pretty crazy. I mean, not, I mean, not crazy in the sense that it's actually, it's been the opposite of crazy. Uh, you know, it's been crazy in the sense that everything's been in on standstill, you know, being the, or having the life of a professional fighter, you know, we're all used to moving and going and our aspect on uh, promoting ourselves is that, you know, look at, you know, we're doing day jobs, but also we're doing fighting and now there's a halt of both. So it, it was, it's crazy in the sense that there's no craziness in my life. I had three fights canceled with, well, you know, which sucks, but you know, there's, there's, uh, you know, I'm talking to my management and there's something lined up now. So, you know, that's what made the last two months better is like now that there's talk about a potential lineup. So, you know, now we're good. I want to get into those, those fights that were canceled. Two of them were pretty big fights. You know what I mean? Like one of them was against a UFC veteran. And then the other one was for a, a middleweight title up in Canada. You know, both of them fell through. What, what was the frustration levels like for the fa past few months? Um, you know, it's, uh, it's just kind of like a frustration that just gets you to a stomach, you know? It's just like, you know, you're prepared, you're ready to go, I'm ready for my comeback, and to get my way back into the into the, the UFC uh, cage. And one of them was against uh, a UFC veteran, Kyle Stewart. That was the one that got canceled that was in Arizona. And that was, I mean... The the world championship one that hurt. Don't get me wrong, because it was in Canada. I was excited. My management went through all the details to get me approved. Excuse me, approved to go to Canada. And then all of a sudden, he calls injury three weeks out. So you know, that's unfortunate. I mean, whether it really was an injury or not, who knows? But you know, uh, nonetheless, it's unfortunate that that happened. And then my management was quick. Within uh, two weeks or so, they had a replacement. Um, we had, they had two replacements, um, but they both fell through. And um, in the end, because of the COVID-19. So, you know, it just sucked because, I mean, I, honestly, it was probably a good thing that the Canada thing got canceled because it would have sucked to get stuck over borders or, you know, across borders. So that would have sucked. Yeah, but uh, yeah, it's just uh, finally we're we're you know we're talking with the promotion that's you know that's doing shows during this time, so you know it's probably it's looking like a good like a, a good outcome. Yeah, definitely. Well, you know the prospects are there, man. You're you're one of the guys that've been around and and fighting and clawing, man, for the past few years to get to the big show, and it's just like. Uh, speed bump here or there, you know what I mean? That's that's kind of like the story. And uh, but you keep winning though, and that's all you can do is go out there and win these big fights. Yeah, I mean, I appreciate. It. Yeah, I appreciate you. You know, you thinking uh, that I won my last fight too. It's just like you know, all you can do is just win. You just put the the test ahead of you, and you just gotta pass it, and then just just wait for the next one. It's it's just like, yeah, they're stringing me around. It's kind, of, but basically. That show was like a circus for Dana White just to be like, you you did a takedown when you shouldn't have, mm -hmm. no contract. And they're like, what? Like, I did 15 or 14 minutes and 59 seconds of, of great fight besides, in your mind, you know. So like we can be we can like you know split hairs on that about what that show really is, but you know if if they came up with another opportunity, the bottom line is that I'm gonna take it. I have to. I'm in that I'm in that position like you said. I've been fighting, and clawing for so close or for so long to get so close. You know, at this point, you know, it just I just it just has to be done. The contender series. That's what I think a lot of people will focus on more with you. Other than the yeah. other fights that you've had in between where you've performed so well, the contender series, you know, two results that didn't go in your favor, 
The first one was uh, overturned. You won, but you they overturned it for some little, you know, loophole that they have over there. And then the yeah. other one, the last fight last July, was a split decision that a lot of people felt like you won that fight. Uh, which one hurts more for you? Um, this. I mean, honestly, the split decision lost because even though I won on that five day notice. I walked away with the win, and it was on a five-day notice, and it was in the largest uh, stage in the world. Like, it was inside the octagon, so it's like nothing. Whether Dana White could take away what he thought I belonged in the UFC that night doesn't take away the fact that I won or I, that got, I got 10 Gs put in my pocket. That also feels good, <laughs> you know, so... Um, but the last one was just like knowing that like just like there was such a bu- a big build up for the fight and hearing everyone's perspective and then watching the fight myself after and knowing and then confirming with myself that I won the fight it it's just a big it's a big uh it's a big sting because also I was talking to my management I was like okay well you know obviously like UFC doesn't like they're not interested for the man himself, like, was saying, I want to fight. He says, I belong there, but I'm not there. So, like, um, should we focus more on Bellator? Should we focus more across, you know, international waters over in Asia, like, with Ryzen and um, One FC and everything like that? And then my management. That... So, you know, it, um, it was a big thing, you know, having to, like, come back and, and reanalyze, but mm. you know, um, there's talk about you know, like you know, chances again about you know, other platforms again that I was on in the past, and ones I can uh get my face back on. I haven't signed a contract yet, so I'm not gonna say names right now, but you know, it's like I, it's gonna be the third time I'm on the show, so hopefully, it's just like. I, I have a chance to overturn everything that we would just been talking about. Uh, the the last fight also, it, it brings up a, a, a topic of the judging. You know what I mean? Like Dana White came out and said, like, you belong there. If the judges would have gave you the fight, you would have got the contract. You actually would yeah. be probably setting to, you know, have your UFC debut now. It's like, what do you do to yeah. the judging, man? Well, yeah, the, I mean, I mean, honestly... <clears throat> they stole at least 40 to 50 grand out of my pocket. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, simply they stole, I mean, instantly a five grand that night. And then, um, you know, UFC contract status and all the perks and all, all the, if you know, win on, win on, win, that, that's a lot of money that like, you know, that, that, that they took away from me. And, and it's just like, I was always one of those guys is just like, well, like you know, you should always just finish your opponent. Like, don't leave it up to the judges. Like, well, sometimes you're faced up against a fucking badass Russian from an undefeated Russian from Dagestani, and you know he's just a thoroughbred badass. So, and you got to go against up again, go up and give him your all. And sometimes, and everyone and you, like I just like everyone and the other the person who lost. The reason, like the reason why they only lost to a decision, was because everyone in their corner was saying, "Don't leave it to the judges. Don't leave it." Like so, just like, you know, I was like, I, like, I, I used to kind of follow that, that judgment, but now after I'm like, "Fuck, man!" Like, it's, it's all a, it's all a scam. The judges are scams. So there's nothing you can do. Like, you mean to tell me that I am, not, um earning a validation of my performance just because I didn't finish the fucker? Are you are you serious? Was that look at that fight. Was that not a fucking great fight? Mm-hmm. And now you mean to tell me that I don't get respect or validation just because I left it up to the judges? No, fuck that. Like we're both soldiers in that. And like so it's just like I like um that that changed my mind on that. And you know, it was just uh that's what things is is uh, the judges is every every sport right baseball football soccer you name it all they all have a scoreboard why isn't that with with fighting they have 
high speed cameras, instant replay. They have all the technology now that okay, a jab is one point, a power punch is two points, you know, a uh, leg kick, one point, body kick, two point, head kick, three points. Like, fucking count it up. Let's point it up. Let's just point it up. And then all of a sudden, if someone gets knocked out, all the points don't matter anymore because someone was finished. But it's just like, um, fighting, boxing, all all the combat sports, the ones where it's the least like a sport and all like war is um, there's no scoring. It's just so weird to me. Like there is technology now that we can score it up. It might take the one minute break that we get in between each round and then the start of the next round. Okay, well we tallied up all the all the punches, which they do. They already tally up all the punches each round. Why not just give a a, a monetary value to each punch or a, a score value to each punch, right? It's just like um, it's rigged, man. It's just rigged. The most favorite fighter wins. It's every time. I was I was a four to one underdog, or at least over four to one underdog on that on that card. And, you know, just like, you know, some people, I guess maybe them judges had some money on that fight. They didn't think I was going to pull it through. You know, it's just, I'm sorry, I'm rambling on, but, you know, I can go on forever. The, I, obviously, that's the fight that hurts more. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, you know, it's understandable. Like, the judges, it's always been a topic, and, and, and they need to fix that. Like you said, they got to change something. Also, people have to realize that at the highest level, there's fights that are going to be going to the judges all the time. So it's not like that you can mm. downgrade somebody's performance because of a, a split decision. You know what I mean? It's just just crazy to me that if people would attack somebody for fighting their heart out and then losing in a split decision. Right, right. Yeah, exactly. It's like how many people, it's like street fights, there's no, there's no reason our street fights should last more than a minute. But then sometimes you see those people who don't know how to fight and then there's street fights and they last forever. And they're like, someone please call it an end to this. There's no winner, you know, and just like, it's, you know, like, you know, but then you get two high quality athletes. Of course, there's a, a big possibility of that happening. Uh, also, another thing that uh, I saw that you, um, you were thinking about going down to welterweight again. Um, is that something that you've been working on the last couple of months? Yeah, I mean, honestly... I've been working on it. I, I keep welterweight within striking distance, mm -hmm. but not too. I, um, I keep the skillet more uh, in temperature check for 185. So right now I, I weighed 182 after practice. But um, before, when, when I was preparing for those other fights, um, I was weighing 178, 175 sometimes after practice. So... Uh, 170 is definitely a big option right now. I feel like um, I'm still getting my diet in check right now because I, I dropped me. I eat, I'm like 90 or so percent vegan. So, you know, mm -hmm. which made a good weight drop on my, you know, on my body. So it's looking like 170s or Walter weight is a, is a good option, you know. Uh, right now, I think my management is still fighting or finding fights for me at 185. But I told them my my thoughts and my and I talked to my coach Dave Trail on my thoughts about dropping to 170. And it's looking like that might be a big possibility. And my managers loved it. They loved hearing that, like, dude, if we can get you back to 170, healthy and performing, um, like you know, I think that would be. Uh, UFC would like take you a lot more seriously. Well, you know, you got to get in where you fit in, right? Sometimes it's just <laughs> that's what it hey, is. Man, that's the name of the game. Yeah, so you know, but it seems like you have something in the works. You know, you can't really talk about it too much, but a lot of people know what's going on in the summertime. Uh, Jordan, yeah. man, I appreciate the time and uh, and hopefully uh, you do get that fight set up and get it scheduled and, and we'll see you back in, in the cage again soon. Hey man, I appreciate the time in the interview today. I will, I will tell you something that my management told uh, me is that by the end of 2020, you will see me in UFC, and that's something that I fully believe. No matter through this COVID-19 bullshit, my friend, that that's that, that that belief is what I'm also striving and also believing in myself. You will see that.